Hey budget nerds, thanks for tuning in. Today we'll take a quick look at the Terramaster D8 Hybrid Direct Attached Storage, which was just launched on Kickstarter May 7th. Welcome back. Yes, TerraMaster reached out and offered to send a unit out for review, but as always, I'm honest in all my videos, these thoughts are my own. TerraMaster just started their Kickstarter campaign for this DAS. We're seeing more and more companies opt to go the Kickstarter route, which I don't really know how I feel about that, but it's going for $1.99 if you pledge there now and we'll jump to $2.99 after the campaign is over. I have hardware in hand and they've already met their goal, so getting hardware in hand is a pretty safe bet. I've reviewed several NASAs before, but never a DAS or direct attached storage. The difference being they plug directly into a computer via USB, generally, instead of an ethernet cable, and do not have a full-blown operating system like a NAS has. The intention is to provide external storage with the PC you connect it to taking charge. This DAS does have some tricks on board, like the ability to raid two of the eight bays. Yes, just two of them. The hard drives in bay one and two can be set up as a raid zero or raid one. For those that need a refresher, raid zero provides better performance and raid one provides redundancy. This is the first DAS I've really messed with, so maybe this is common in lower-priced DASs, but I did really expect to at least be able to raid all four bays, but nope. In the box, there's a box that contains the power adapter, providing 12 volts at 7.5 amps, a tiny screwdriver that should make any man feel shame if used, a thing to push the reset button, Screws for SSDs and stuff, a USB-C to USB-C cable for the PC connection, and of course the DAS itself. Installing the drives is pretty easy with the toolless drive bays. You'll need a Phillips screwdriver, or maybe that little one, and maybe a straight screwdriver to install the M.2 drives. Like their last NAS I reviewed, it comes in black. On the back is the RAID switch, dial thing, reset button, a USB-C port, and the power port. On the sides are just a logo with some venting. On the front are the four bays with some small status lights. Now, I know what you're thinking. Budget nerd, you intelligent, thrifty, handsome tech enthusiast, you. I thought this was an eight bay DAS, but I only see four. Well, you'd be right, this DAS also supports four M.2 NVMe SSDs, which is great, and you can get some nice speed with these. You can access the M.2 slots after you remove this side panel. They're all kept in place with thumb screws, which made it easy to install, unless you're me. A straight screwdriver may help. Once turned on, your new DAS will format any drive you put in it and configure the two bays however the switch is set. If you wish to change the RAID mode later, back up your data because this DAS will format the drives when changing. It also appears you can daisy chain these together and get more storage. This DAS alone will support up to 128 terabytes of space, including the M.2 storage, which alone supports a max of 32 terabytes. Theoretically, you can see speeds up to 1,250 megabytes per second with its 10 gigabit per second bandwidth, but I saw less than that, although the speeds were still great. For example, Transferring a large file from an NVMe drive inside my computer to two platter drives set as RAID 0 in the DAS, I hit upwards of 392 megabytes per second. The same test with two SSDs installed in the DAS set to RAID 0 hit 542 megabytes per second. 
Again, the same transfer to one of the DAS's NVMe drives reached speeds of 567 megabytes per second. So speeds are really good, however, your results may vary. I used a USB-C 3.2 port with an X570 motherboard. Older USB-C ports may be a bottleneck. Value then for the speed and the amount of storage you can get in here is uh, pretty good at the $199 price. The DAS styling is fine, if not too understated. It will go to sleep when the PC goes to sleep, saving some power. Otherwise, we'll pull about 10 watts when the disks are hibernating, or as much as 41 watts when reading or writing from the four platter drives. With that said, I do have some complaints about this DAS, though. I think it's a bit too plain. And like their budget black NAS I reviewed a while back, the status lights are tiny and a bit hard to see sometimes. Also, the markings on the front is just a sticker, and it fell off. I put it back on, and it fell off again, making it even more of a generic black box. I also wish you could set up all the drives in a RAID. Even if you had two separate RAIDs, one for the four large bays and one for the NVMe drives, that would be better than nothing. I reached out about this, and TerraMaster cited usage on other products and keeping the costs down as to why they didn't go this route. I'm surprised you can't set up a RAID on the NVMe drives at all. They just appear as separate disks in Windows. Having the option for space is nice, but you can't do much with them other than just a bunch of disks. Windows is also pretty strict on not letting you set up a software RAID if the storage is considered removable. So, if you use Windows, at least you're stuck with, again, just a bunch of disks. Also, other hybrid storage solutions will have the platter drives and M.2 drives work together, caching frequently accessed files, new files, or large files on the NVMe drives, helping to increase performance. Alas, on the D8 hybrid, they are fast, but from what I can tell, they are just there for fast storage. I also wish that dial on the back, the switch to switch RAID modes, was a bit more secure. Again, when you move it, it will format the drives in bay 1 and 2, and what would stop someone from just walking up and moving the dial and deleting your data on those drives? So, it works well, it gives lots of extra storage space, and is a pretty good price at the Kickstarter price point and provides really good speeds. However, it looks pretty plain Jane, and your RAID options are limited. Well, there you have it. Let me know what you think of this setup, and if you'd get one at the $299 price point, if you pledged your monies and why, drop a comment below, and thanks for watching.